It's a train. The train's coming no matter what. Building relationships, we've seen the scientific proof, we've seen the data that building relationships in our classrooms is of the utmost importance. Good morning, friends. Welcome back to the Caffeinated Classroom, and welcome back. Welcome back to my car. Like, can we just, let's give my give my pop my car a little thumbs up I always start these vlogs not always but most of the time start these vlogs in my car because it's the only time I'm alone and even then I'm only alone for so long as you can see by the car seats hey it is what it is you know it when when you're uh very busy teacher mom you're rarely alone and therefore welcome to the inside of my car i am really excited about what is happening today and tomorrow because i am going to a restorative justice training down at the san diego county office of education with a few other teachers from my site um we have other teachers from our site who have already gone through this two-day training we are the next kind of like a batch of teachers that are going through slowly but surely um, our administrative team wants to have a few more pockets of uh, teachers and faculty members from our school trained so that we can help kind of like trickle out this whole philosophy and this whole like way of looking at discipline and restorative justice instead of punitive just like no kid you're bad. Okay, I haven't had my coffee yet. I'm sitting in front of a Starbucks right now. Hey, hello, Starbucks. So I'm going to hop in and grab my mobile order because I'm one of those people who sits in the parking lot and orders my Starbucks so that I don't have to talk to people when I can't talk such as right now. Um, I'm going to go grab that and then I'm waiting on a couple of my friends and we're going to carpool together because we're in North County and uh, I'll let you guys know. I'm going to try and vlog during the day. We'll see how it goes. I really have no idea what I'm getting into. So I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. Good afternoon. It is no mistake that you are seeing my classroom here. I um, popped in to my classroom. It's like 3.30 in the afternoon. I just got done with day one of this training. I am here to just kind of take stock. I have kiddos who are turning in work that they were either gone Monday and weren't able to turn in or that is late work and that they need to turn in, you know, for their final, which is happening in two days. Um, and my gosh, it's incredible. The number of chairs, it looks like there was some sort of like a flood and everyone had to run as fast as they could. And the chairs are just like, you know what reminds me of actually is that one scene in, um, that one scene in The Sixth Sense where like Haley Joel Osment is sitting at the um, kitchen table and his mom's like making breakfast and then like you turns to her like making breakfast and you turn back to the kitchen table and he's like stark white and he's like super scared and all of the cabinets are open. That's what it's like with the chairs in here. It's just like all of the cabinets are open. All of the chairs are out in like the middle of the space. So I'm just going around and fixing it. Sorry. That's my random sidebar for you. So today's training. Here is my biggest takeaway. I have two takeaways. Number one. Yes, absolutely. Restorative practice leading to restorative justice is absolutely something. It's just like the right way to be a human. It's assuming goodwill with people. It's um, figuring out ways to work together versus making somebody just feel badly for not understanding something the first time, whether it's behavior or academic or like whatever it is. Yes things that I already philosophically agree with. I absolutely practice in some ways and in my own fashion within this classroom. I'm happy to have and happy to hopefully learn tomorrow some more tools to take with me back here into this classroom and to share with some of my colleagues who don't get to go through this training just yet. My second takeaway is that sitting in a large circle with no table to lean on or anything like that for an entire day is extremely draining for me. And these are things that I know about myself. I am not a good sitter, as you see. Like, I walk around this classroom during these vlogs normally anyways, um, just because I can't, like, keep still very well. But we did a lot of sitting and a lot of listening. Um, and I think it's because, like, on day one of a training like this, they need to have just kind of a lot of exposition and a lot of, like, explanation of, like, buy and, and creating buy-in. I think my whole thing is like, you already had my buy-in. Like I already believe that this sort of work is best practice for educators and for people who work with people. They don't have to be children necessarily. So sometimes I find myself like staring at a wall and zoning out and 
my mind starts to wander as I'm kind of like, yes, I agree with you, I agree with you, I agree with you. But once again, I do see where like, I might not be exactly like the general population that are going to these trainings. I totally get that. Um, so I'm hoping that tomorrow is some more tangible strategies and activities and things that I can both run in my classroom and that I can help train other people on. We are learning some best practices for working with students in an educational environment. The way that we are learning those practices is by being talked at all day long. So I was just like, oh my God, it's like a lot of talking. Um, and I didn't do a lot of talking, like, which is rare for me, as you know, so I, I start to lose interest. Uh, yeah, so I am here now. All that my sub, <laughs> all that the sub wrote was, had some trouble starting. I think that means the DVD for Of Mice and Men. They were good, exclamation point. So I guess it was a good day, otherwise I would have heard more than that. I am going to push in the chairs and the rest of the tables. I'm going to write a new note on the board because I left composition books for my students that I graded yesterday in nice little stacks. And this is what it looks like. Mind you, the note on the board says, first item, take your composition books. I'm gonna say 50% of my students got that and 50% of my students were like, nah, I don't need to. So we're gonna take care of that. Um, and I'm going to create just another sub plan, which is basically the same thing as today for tomorrow. Write a note on the board, like I said, for my kiddos. And then I'm gonna go home and decompress with my own children. I believe we're gonna have a little Candyland battle, my son and I tonight. So very exciting things. And I will check in with you guys tomorrow morning for day two. tired. So it's Saturday morning and I'm in my classroom and I just finished uh, my students grades for the quarter because we had finals for the last two days as I've been saying ad nauseum all week long. Um, and I kept thinking to myself, oh I really need to finish this vlog about um, not responsive classroom. What did I go to? <laughs> Who am I talking to? There's, there's no one here. Why do I keep turning and talking to people? <laughs> <gasps> Restorative justice training. Oh my gosh. It's not even that early, so I can't even blame it on that. But I am in my classroom on a Saturday. It's like 62 degrees in my classroom right now because this classroom becomes a slight refrigerator. Beside the point, I have taken since Wednesday when I finished my day two um, to just process. Mind you, I also got into like the absolute like you know what storm of finals and I've been grading and grading and grading. Hence, I just came in this morning, finished my grades. Here's what I'm gonna do right now, just kind of give you my full debrief of that whole restorative justice, restorative practices. Basically, restorative practices is what you do to instill restorative justice within your classroom. That's what I've taken away. I have my handy dandy notebook, just like Dora the Explorer. Wait, is that Dora? Or is that Blue's Clues? Anyways, Nickelodeon characters, handy dandy notebook. Here we go. I think it was Blue's Clues. Um, I'm actually going to sit with you at my desk because holding the camera like this hurts my arm. So let's do that. I definitely just went and opened this notebook and realized it's the wrong one. I took, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> it's gonna be a long day. <laughs> I took notes in this notebook. So I have to give you, before I like dive into my notes, my overall is very positive. I think that restorative practices and restorative justice is just the right way to be. It's just the right way to be a human being. It's the right way to be a teacher and molding the minds and changing the lives of our youth. It's the right way, in my opinion, to parent and just to like interact with other human beings. Always assume goodwill before jumping to conclusions about people, right? And the way to assume goodwill in order to build human connection is by listening to people and learning how to see others as human and not just other, right? So, I mean, that's my whole overall. Restorative practices talks about like circles, restorative circles. So like if you've ever looked into this and I will link their website down below. Um, I'm trying to remember, is it iirp.com I believe or .org? 
I'm butchering it, but I will link it down below, the correct one, and I'll probably put a little title right here. Um, much more information. There are books you can get on this stuff. There's a whole lot of amazing information out there, but I will just tell you what my takeaways were and how I plan to implement this on Monday even in my classroom. Because while I am a teacher who spends much of my first week with my students establishing classroom community, classroom culture. This is how we expect each other to behave and therefore this is how we rise to those expectations within this classroom because we are all members of this community and doing those sorts of activities and that like bonding and like community building sort of stuff. Um, the stuff that I got on day two especially are just these really fantastic, quick, um, and easy to implement like activities to facilitate and just quick conversations to have with um, a big huge group or even small groups but that also quickly bond our students and our classes as a community as a culture so they look a little bit crazy it's kind of like inside a beautiful mind here but here's what they look like I like to take doodle notes as you can see because my mind is all over the place but so I can just kind of go through it with you a little bit so here in the middle of the page it says mindfulness because that's truly what all of this is about it's about mindfulness it's about making <laughs> why is there a bell on Saturday <laughs> that's really weird <laughs> anyways <laughs> it's about making mindful and purposeful connections teacher to student student to student and student to teacher and just like teacher to teacher and teacher to administrator like staff member to staff member um mindful and purposeful and authentic connections bonding humans so like i have here be authentically human and the way that i took that is like not just with your students because you guys have heard me talk a lot about being authentic with students because that's how i think the best way to bond is to just show them that you're a human being and like you don't yeah you know more stuff than they do because you've been on this planet longer than they have but like that doesn't mean that we're any better, right? Yes, we're a place of authority, and yes, we are guiding them through whatever it is, like your course, the four years of high school, what, what or like wherever you are with students. Um, but we're still human beings on a very basic level. Um, let's see, what do I have? We are all responsible to our school community, something to instill within our classrooms and like all on campus. Um, give and receive grace is a thing that I took away. Ceremonial, okay, I'll talk about this in a minute. Ceremonial talking piece, being clear about practice and communicating why. So basically, oh, there's scientific research behind bonding with students and building relationships and connections and it has direct correlation to academic and otherwise achievement and growth within our students. Um, there's like an 80-20 divide being proactive should be 80% of your day like as an educator being proactive about behavior and making connections and only 20% should be reactive to when, I mean, we're talking about kids here. We're talking about human beings. We're going to misstep. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to make choices that could have been better, right? So if 20% of our time and energy goes towards correcting after the fact to reactive and 80% goes to proactive building connections to head things, these things off at the pass. That's kind of like what this whole practice is looking for. Um, an empowerment versus a dependency model in like building a community where students feel empowered to be who they are and speak up for themselves versus being dependent on attention and just help from others essentially the court or like one of the big key pieces of restorative practices is that you create a restorative circle you sit your entire class in a big huge circle and everybody needs to be able to see i mean it's basically knights of the round table right nobody is in any one place of power above anybody else you sit in a big huge circle and there are things you can do to facilitate bonding and there are all these different levels and this kind of gets into some of the day two stuff but on day one our facilitator had us just do like a check-in like rate how you are doing today between one and ten. One is I'm not good at all physically, mentally, emotionally, like whatever. Uh, ten is I'm great, I'm ready to climb a mountain, right? Metaphorically or actually. So we actually did that as our big group of like 40 educators. We went around the room and we all rated ourselves. I was like a solid five and a half because I had a migraine. Um, and it was like the simplest, quickest thing that like 
I could have just kind of ignored, but I knew that the key here was being mindful about things. So I was like, okay, there has to be a purpose to this. And I realized if I really keyed in and I really, it's not that I was ignoring anybody, but if I really mindfully played, paid close attention to all of the people as they said their numbers, you could start to infer how and why they were feeling whatever number it was. And it made you, me, it made me create a small connection with these people whose names I didn't even remember. I still don't remember. There were 40 of us and I was there with four of my colleagues. So we spent a lot of time, my colleagues and I talking about how to implement this just on our campus amongst our staff, because we have a very large staff and we're pretty segmented by nature of being a high school. And we want to try and like glob that back together. So that was day one. I got, I got some good stuff. And I, I think the, the thing that came out of day one that was the biggest for me was like, okay, it's not just us like, well, I'm not young and new anymore. <laughs> 12 years ago when I was young and new, this whole building relationships and like taking what seems like time away from academics to build relationships, even though in actuality, it's not really taking time away from anything because if you can build those relationships now, Academics go so much faster and they are, they're so much more impactful. It's a train. The trains come in no matter what. Building relationships, we've seen the scientific proof, we've seen the data that building relationships in our classrooms is of the utmost importance for social, emotional being, and for academic achievement, quite frankly. So, let's get into day two. Day two gave us some more practical things to do within our circles and some different conversations to have to quickly break down barriers and to bond our students and to weave ourselves into the fabric of this little community that we're making so that we're not just on the outside guiding and like instructing, but we're also part of it. Oh, and I'll show you my, I mean, my day two notes are a lot more measly than my day one notes. Actually, they're not. I drew more. Day two, I definitely drew more. The big things that I wrote were, finding ways to like build just just build mindfulness into our students and like we were talking about different like calm and like mindful breathing activities and things and like small meditations just to help our students clear their heads different sorts of things you could do at the beginning middle and end of class if you realize your students just need a break or something to build into like a regular practice um let's see face-to-face -face accountability so that's what i'm going to talk about and then i'll let you go one of the things that I keep hearing about and that I've kind of seen and that was even addressed in our training session is that, oh, so you're just going to sit in a big circle and students are never going to be disciplined for anything and they're never accountable. No, not true. This model of restorative practices and building a community inside your classroom to head off behavior challenges before they happen does not mean that students will not be held accountable for their actions. It means that they'll be held accountable in a much more tangible and more concrete way. Instead of having students just go up to the office because they need to get out of the classroom and I mean, which obviously is still going to happen because if you're doing certain things in a classroom, like you need to be taken away from that environment, you need to be removed for the good of everybody. Um, but rather than let's say one kid does is bullying another kid, right? Like very common in the world rather than just the bully getting in trouble. And then the kid that got bullied just kind of sitting there and being like, Oh, that I feel like crap now that sucks. Um, or like, however they're going to react. The bully ends up having to face the person that they bullied with other people around and be face to face accountable because we are building relationships. They don't have to be best friends. They don't have to go away from this and like sit at lunch together. But like a, a young person who is being unkind or cruel or whatever to another person, treating them unfairly needs to face that person and say, this is what was going through my mind at the time that I was mean to you and see how that affects the person that they were bullying, like on a very real one-to-one -one basis, not just two kids sitting in front of an administrator, but like within a classroom where they are all part of the community and see how that affects others. Um, it is not a perfect system, but I really, I mean, like even just the way that I'm raising my own children, this is how we should be 
interacting as people and as educators I think that it is our responsibility to teach our students how to agree and how to disagree and how to apologize and how to forgive if somebody has stepped out of line and done something outside of like what is acceptable in your classroom culture and in your school culture and in the world culture. Okay. I've been talking a lot. This is gonna be a long video, but if you want to find more information about restorative justice and restorative practices, check the link down below right underneath this video because you will find a whole lot of information and that will lead you, just know that it's gonna lead you down a rabbit hole. There's amazing stuff out there. I can't wait to keep you updated on the things that I'm implementing within my own classroom. I'm actually in here on a Saturday to finish grades and I might be moving some furniture around so that it's easy to make a circle in here regularly because I want to try it out as of Monday. We have a new quarter starting. Hey, why not? Let's give it a go. But thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, if you are not already subscribed, please take a moment to do so. Like this video, comment down below, please. If you have been trained in restorative practices and there are things that you can add to my little discussion here, if it's something you want to know more about, what are some questions that you have, I will try to answer as many as I can or the rest of our community will jump in as well if they can answer your question. And I will see you guys next.